The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 12th, the terrific Tuesday edition. Is today Tuesday? No, today's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, it's Wednesday already. It's the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question and in our Tigers Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. All the indices trading the downside. The Dow's off 427. S&P 62. NASDAQ 100, 271. Russell's off 31. Semis are off 94. Tranny's 246. New York Stock Exchange down 185. You've got gold off 12 bucks. Silver down. Our silver's off uh, three pennies. Light sweet crude is up 83 cents. Natural gas up about a penny. 30 year Treasury almost down one full point out there. Trading out at 155.31. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you got regenerate pharmaceuticals up over 2% or 11 bucks. Um, Shop Spotter up 7 bucks or 23%. Domino's Pizza having a good day up $7. 4.29 is where it's printing at. Credit Corp up 7 bucks or 5%. To the downside, Mercado Libre leading the charge off 63. Google's off 62. Amazon 55. Booking Holdings 49. Wix uh, is down 50. So certainly plenty to look at, but I want to look at what you want to look at. So uh, John posted something, and there's no questions yet. John posted something right now to me, a little private message about the NQs, the two-hour chart, and the question is that a peak G. So let's do this. Let's give me, let me uh, give me just a moment here, and we'll go take a look at that. So we've got a spotter out there. That spotter is looking to say, hey, is there any possibility of a bottom, or what are the signals? So let's go take a look at the NQ, and you'll see the two-hour time frame chart in the bottom left out here. So John, I don't want. Let me let me just re let me expand this out. So here's my two-hour time frame chart, and let me go ahead and repopulate this. And on the two-hour time frame chart, I do not have a what you oh you're looking for a peak G. Um, I don't have that. I had that earlier. Um, a B C D E F. Yeah. So I don't have that, John. But sometimes I think our two-hour charts don't necessarily match up uh, from a bars standpoint. Nothing that I can do about that. I do have price stretched inside the NQ, moving lower, doing less route of energy. But this is going to require a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. But let's stay with the NQs here anyways. In this set of charts, we've got eight different time frames. We've got the monthly. And on the monthly chart, you can see the price is just pulling back and testing its oscillator and change line. We're still above that level. That level, by the way, is 12,952. As long as price remains above that, things are copacetic, so to speak. The NQ, I don't have really a great uh, set of signals out here on the NQ, so I'm just going to pass over and take a look at the daily time frame chart. It's a daily time frame chart that shows that we are in bar number nine and still above its most recent breakout area at the 12,776.50. So this suggests here that the NQ may form a bottom today or tomorrow. In the TD9 pattern, those bottoms need to form bars 8, 9 to the bar following bar number 9. So we still have tomorrow. Ideally, the ones that make the best bottoms, should the NQ bottom, 
There's not a guarantee that it's going to bottom. Are the ones that form those TD9 counts above TD9 count breakout support? That's what we have right now as its signal. Of course, when we take a look at these patterns and we start to see patterns on a daily basis that identify a top or a bottom, in this case here, we're looking at a bottom. What we like to see are some changes in trends and some other bottoming signals on those time frames. For those time frames right now, I've got the 30 minute chart up on my screen. Here, if I expand this out, do we have any kind of a bottom pattern? Now, I can't draw the A to B equals CD pattern out here, but the answer is yes, we have that A to B equals CD out here. If that is going to identify a bottom, we're going to see price close above Stevie's red line. That red line is 13089, we'll call it. Let's call it 1390, um, 13090. If price can close above that, then that's going to signal at least a counter trend rally to 13181. 13181 is the top of the new profile that formed for the 30 minute time frame. If price closed above that, you're looking at 13305. Above 13305, the signal would be a potential change in trend. We're well away. We're, we're, we're far away from that. You have to take things one step at a time. And right now what price needs to do is close above that oscillator and change line, preferably two consecutive bars. That's the 30-minute time frame chart. The 60-minute time frame chart has already confirmed a road momentum indicator bottom. It's done that with this little piercing candle. In its case, price is going to try to get into the – it needs to close above 13,127. That's the bottom of the 60-minute profile. If it can do that, 13,282 to 13,375 becomes its target. Two-hour chart, we took a look at that with John. It's still in process. My two-hour time frame bar closes at 2 p.m. So, John, you can kind of use that as a gauge with regard to my time frames versus yours. So here, 10 to 8 in the morning, uh, 6 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 2 in the morning, midnight. You kind of get the – and you back it up and you get to 6 o'clock uh, when the NQ opened back up for my two-hour time frame chart. On the four-hour chart, this formed a TD9 count bottom. All that's going on right now is a test of that low. And as long as price – Price closes back above that. That was nothing more than a test of critical support. In the case of the five-hour time frame chart, this went ahead and confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Nice big old bullish engulfing candle. You see that oscillator and change line and just how valuable it is. And it's red. And that said, you've got to close above it. Hey, I like that little rally you had, but you've got to close above it to really float my skirt, so to speak. And it's not doing it just yet. That would be 13,229. So we take a look at the NQ. Has it bottomed? No. It hasn't given it, it may have bottomed, but what it hasn't done, it has not given us that confirming signal. That first signal would take place with the close above we call it what 13090 as the uh, number. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the NQ. Let's take a look at let me shift back from here over to my oh the shift the shift mechanism is over on this screen, Steve. -O. So let's do the shifting. I'm going to come back to the main screen and in the main screen, I want to do one other thing off 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 uh, screen here. We're going to go take a look at. I'd mentioned this during the during the, uh, the the 1 p.m. update, and that was this. That was with regard to the ES mini. So here is a weekly time frame chart for the ES mini, and here are the weekly TAS market profiles. How critically important, as you take a look at this chart and as you study this as we go into the break, how important is the bottom of that profile at 4080? Price is sitting right there at, a, at support. And this is in its buy zone. So we've got to go take a look at the other charts for the ES Mini and see what signals they're generating. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the uh, phone lines are open, the email lines are open, and the uh, internal uh, den lines, they're open as well. We were taking a look at the ES Mini before we went to that breakout here. And what I have on the uh, chart are the weekly set of profiles. And you can see now the week is not over, and price can move down below this level, this level being the 20, what is, I'm sorry, 20, the 40, 80 area. Uh, it's really going to be about the weekly close, so come Friday. But you can see... In the typical bullish moves, it's been a gift in a bullish move. We're still in that bullish trend. The gift is price getting back to the bottom of the daily profile. An example of that most recently, September, the week of September 21st, uh, 2020 out there. The next time was the week of uh, that began October 26, 2020. And you can see that throughout the uh, throughout this chart. Now you close below on a weekly basis below the bottom of its profile that typically leads to much lower price. So the ES Mini, all you've got to do is one number come Friday. You don't have to take any action today. Uh, and it's 4080.25. That is the ES Mini. So now let's go take a look at our other set of charts for the ES Mini just to try to say, OK, if you're back to a weekly level of support, do we see any inkling of a uh, of a bottom anywhere? So we're going to look at those same eight panel time frame charts. You got the monthly over on the left hand panel. You can see it's just fine. Its signal is price is going to continue to move higher. Why do I say that? Because it's just simply last month negated the TD nine count pattern and it did it without even a hiccup. So you just have a normal pullback. If you take a look at the weekly chart out here, uh, it's not going to have any kind of topping pattern. I'm sure there's an A to B equals CD, but if we were to close here right now, uh, then it would negate that TD nine count pattern. You do have erosion to indicator in wave number seven on the daily time frame. We've covered that. You're only in bar number two to the downside. So it's not going to be the daily time frame that gives us any kind of a signal. In fact, its signal on the ES mini is that it may really be targeting the 38, 43, 25 level. How are you going to know if that's going to happen? Why? Well, can guarantee you that if, in fact, the ES Mini closes below 4080.25 on a weekly basis, that would really become the likely target, 3843. We're not there just yet. Now we go to those short-term time frame charts. And yeah, we could go to even shorter, but we're just trying to keep this reasonable short-term time frame charts, let the market really prove itself to us. And that's the 30-minute. And on the 30-minute chart, we'll just expand this out. You can see you've got both a road's momentum indicator signal. That has not been confirmed, not just yet. And you've got a, a TD9 count. Well, that has been confirmed. 
So what should take place from here? The ES Mini should go at least target its oscillator and change line. That's that red line. Currently, that's approximately 4093. I say approximately because as price goes up and down, that line will also go up and down. But that's what the out that's what should take place. Whether it takes place or not, that I don't know. But that's what should take place. And if price closes above that, then that says I go up to my next resistance area. That would happen to be at this moment in time, 121 in the afternoon, the bottom of the current profile. And that's at 4120. Look, a new profile can form at any point in time, but we go with the data that we've got. So the 30-minute chart says, okay, I got down to a level of support on the weekly. So that would make sense that you would see that first attempt at the rally. Now we have to let it prove itself to us. Do you take this trade right now? You certainly could. And your stop would have to be a close below bar number nine of the, or the low of the day, really, is, uh, is how you would take a look at that. If we go to other time frame charts out here, we've got roads, momentum indicator signals, nothing that has confirmed on a 60 minute time frame. You're only in bar number eight that's forming right now. So nothing there, nothing on the two hour time frame chart, nothing on the 240 time uh, minute time frame chart and nothing on the 300 minute chart. If I take a look at the next level of support for the 300, well, I have to go back into my indicators because we're already below 4101 out there. So I won't do that right now because we'll start recalculating everything with all those screens open. We're just not going to do that. It'll just So is there any possibility that the ES Mini has bottomed as price got back to the bottom of that weekly profile? And there's only one indication that it may have, and that's the 30-minute chart. And really that, well, maybe the 10 and the 15-minute might show the same type of thing out here just sticking with the charts that you and i are looking at the 30 minute time frame chart says watch to see if price can get up and take out the oscillator and change line if it can't that's not a good sign at least that's not a good sign on wednesday so that is the es mini we might as well as we're doing this i went ahead and uh uh, we've got the other charts out here so we've got the dow so let's go take a look at the dow see what it's doing out here again same time frame charts out here now in the case of the dow last month was uh, on the monthly charts so or in the upper left hand panel was the td9 count top and prices below that but if on a monthly basis price is able to close above that high which is 34.144 that is a major bullish longer term message for the dow on a weekly time frame out here, I'm sure there's an A to B equals CD, and we may be getting a signal of a top. But, of course, the weekly chart doesn't end till Friday. The daily time frame, this generated a road's momentum indicator a top. Price right now is down below its profile levels. This is suggesting a move to the 33,227 area. On a shorter term time frame or on the intraday time frames, the 30 minute is signaling very much looks like the ES mini. No confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. That's the only bottom in play here on the YM for the 30 minute. I believe on the ES we had also a TD9 count bottom. We do not have that on the 30 minute here. The 60 minute has a signal for road momentum indicator. So does the 120. We don't have anything that looks good on the 240 uh, in the Dow equity future contract because it is now trading below its second. TD9 breakout level, but it has made its way back to level number three, and that's at 33,691. So bottom potential. Um, what's really important about the five hour, the four hour chart is that we can see its oscillator and change line has changed colors. When it changes colors, I can't tell you why it works, not because I can't tell you why it works. I just can't tell you why it works. I just know that it works. And what I mean by that is we typically see price and that line catch up to each other over the coming sessions. I wish I could be more specific, but instead I'll be like uh, Jen Psaki and I'll just be vague out there. So um, with regard to with regard to that, uh, da, 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 what else does the Dow charts show us? It doesn't show us anything else out there. So but we should see on that far chart, it is signaling to you and I that we should see price and an oscillator and change line catch up to each other. It doesn't tell us how that's going to take place, just that it should take place. The five hour chart price right now is trading below a TD nine count. So for the five hour time frame, things are not looking good. Now, this bar here is going to end at I think this might be two o'clock. Let me just make sure uh, that doesn't tell me. Let me get my cursor out here. This might help me out. So that last bar finished that down. Yeah, so this is going to also complete it too. So we've got another 35 minutes out here. And by closing and negating that pattern, that's suggesting a move, a further move lower. Its further move lower is 30, 33, 534. At least that becomes a target. That's its next TD9 breakout level. Um, and those are the signals coming from the Dow. So it looks like the Dow 
wants to move lower unless we see some, some kind of move above that 33,823 level. Let's finish this off. Well, we won't be able to completely finish it or I'll have to do it in a real speed round, the Russell 2000. We might be able to do that. Let's take a look at its signals out here. On a daily basis, you've got bar number eight that formed yesterday. You haven't taken out yesterday's lows. That's always interesting. Now, that's a subtle message that uh, puts the hair on the back of uh, uh, John and the Tiger's Den Z's uh, hair up. He's, he's saying, hey, wait a minute here. You haven't taken out yesterday's low. Very interesting out here. Uh, today's going to become bar number nine, but it's yesterday's low. It could be tomorrow's low that would form that pattern, almost really setting up a consolidation inside of the Russell 2000 out here. So on the short-term time frame charts, I don't have anything real significant for us to review here, that daily chart is saying, hmm, something to think about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Again, phone lines are open, email lines are open, and our Tiger's Den lines are open as well. No questions. So let's go take a look at gold, the U.S. dollar index. Uh, and so side by side, we've got the daily June contract for gold, and we have the June contract for the U.S. dollar index. Let's focus on the U.S. dollar index. What has it done? What has it not done? Well, here's what it's done. Price pulled back to the second TD9 breakout area, 90.13. 
And this form, today you've got a nice big old wide-ranging bullish engulfing candle. This is also a, a, a Four River Morning Star. So there, although there's not really an A to B equal CD pattern here, you can see that the buyers are truly defending a breakout area, $90.13. So we know that. We talked about that yesterday and, and the day before and probably the day before that. And now what the U.S. dollar index is doing is it is trading above that red oscillator and change line. That is printing at 90.67. It's also trading above. It doesn't show on this chart. It shows my black background charts. It is also the U.S. dollar index trading above a new profile that is attempting to form. I won't have confirmation on that profile until uh, this evening, but it still is present. And so we use it. And that was at 90.54. So if price closes above the oscillator and change line, the U.S. dollar index will close above two resistance levels that it shouldn't be able to close above if it's not bullish out there. So Ken, how do I restate that? If it closes above this, the U.S. dollar index is giving you a bullish message and telling you it wants to move higher. Move higher to where? Well, because this profile that is on uh, the task profile that's on this white background chart, in essence, if the one that's on my black brown takes hold, will in essence kind of shift away. It says a move up to $91.75. That's the TD9 breakdown area out there. So that is the current message. If that is the case, I find it hard to believe that gold won't make its way back to the oscillator and change line. And that is at 1809. Look, let's not stop there. What is the message from the... 30 minute chart here and I'll just pull this one over for the US dollar index and here the message is I want to move to higher ground where's that higher ground ninety dollars and eighty nine cents why is it giving us that message because this formed a TD nine count top and price simply took it out it was a little bit of a hiccup price has taken that out and the US dollar index is suggesting to you and I that it wants to continue to move higher now I don't know what it's going to do when it gets to ninety dollars and eighty nine cents I do know if it clears that area the signal is it wants to move even higher higher out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at gold and the U.S. dollar index. Now, with regard to gold, we, we've got to shift charts because just as the U.S. dollar index has formed a new profile or attempting to form a new profile, so too is the gold contract. So now we've got on here, just remember the figure 1809 because I won't remember it. But if you remember it, that will help me. And now what we're going to go do is we're going to go take a look at our black background charts with regard to Goldilocks. So to do that, let's start right here. Here we're going to take a look at a bunch of futures contracts. And we're looking at this one right now. This is the June contract. So let me just simply expand it out. And expanding it out, let me also get rid of that uh, consolidation. We've already covered the measured move here in, in uh, gold. It uh, achieved that. Uh, so you know how these consolidations pass how these consolidation patterns work, the beauty of them. Boy, it'd be nice if I could actually delete this thing. What the Sam heck? What do we got here? There we go. Now we'll delete it. So here you can now see the current bearish structured daily profile. So you put this together with what we're looking at on the U.S. dollar index. Now the closing is going to be important. Typically, when price closes below the center of a bearish structured profile, sellers have the energy to push price back to support. And support is at 1805.90. At least that's the message right now with regard to Goldilocks. Again, this profile is new. It's attempting to form. We won't have confirmation of it until this evening or in the morning out here. But you take the numbers as they are. So that's what gold is doing. I don't know if there's much more for us to take a look at. If we take a look at how gold is trading and all the other currencies out here, you can see it's pulling back in terms of dollars. Pulling back just slightly in terms of euros, actually trading, um, uh, trading almost, uh, almost higher in terms of yen, and just a tad lower in terms of uh, pounds out here. So nothing major. So the ideal, the I say ideal buy area for Goldilocks on a further retracement. Is going to be the bottom of that profile. What was it in 1809? Uh, so I, I, I said it was 1809 or 1810, right? What is the pro, bottom of that profile? 1805.90. You got to like it when things really come together. And that is what the message of the markets is for Goldilocks and the U.S. dollar index uh, as we speak at 135 in the afternoon out here. Okay, so what do we want to take a look at next out here? What would be good to take a look at? Let's see, what haven't we covered for you? Oh, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Let's go see where that advanced decline oscillator is hanging out. Voila. The advanced decline oscillator in a period of three days out here has made it from 
uh, a bullish area right down to that oversold level. The oversold level is when you get to minus 150 on the advanced decline oscillator. Can you go lower? Absolutely. But you should know that the New York, so while we have the Russell 2000 equity future contract, while we have the NQ, both forming TD nine count bottoms today. You've got the New York Stock Exchange moving into that extreme where it's it's in. It's trading in the it's trading in the extreme oversold condition. That's anything below minus 150 out here. So that's saying, okay, maybe we've got a bottom. Take a look at the VIX index. What do we have going on inside the VIX? Oh, the symbols. Where are the symbols? There we go. VIX symbols out here. Just curious, how is the VIX trading relationship to its forward futures contracts? And as we take a look at it, still below the one year, still below the uh, the three month and still below the six month. So nothing significant out here in the uh, spot volatility index. So uh, move on, Steve-O, not much to report. And yeah, it's got a uh, uh, Boston Dan. It's, uh, this could be day number three in a row with the spot volatility index uh, closing, having one day rates of change uh, greater than 10 percent. I don't know how often that has occurred out there. I I don't put much weight on whether it's back-to-back uh, -back or three days in a row. Uh, maybe, maybe I should, but I haven't done the research to know. I just know that you know on the one-day basis, uh, it typically works out there. It has not worked well for the last two trading sessions. So when something doesn't work, you kind of say, I want to rely more on other elements that are going on inside of the market. At least that's what Stevie's take is out here. Uh, Back to this set of charts, anything? So the Russell 2000 is certainly something to be keeping your eye on because it has not made a lower low today. So uh, oftentimes, not oftentimes, but uh, over the past several months, I've received calls or, or, or somebody's asked, hey, hey, right now, if you if you had a gun to your head, not that I want a gun to my head, and you had to take a long position, uh, which – which which uh, of the instruments would you take a long position in? I would go with the Russell 2000 now because it hasn't made a lower low. I, I'm I'm saying uh, you know I'm I'm in my second one would be and I'm not suggesting that you take a long trade right now would be the ES mini because price is sitting there at that weekly level of support. Instead, I would want to make the market prove itself to me uh, and see those bottoms on those shorter term time frames. And I don't believe we have that just yet, but you might get that by day's end. So I would just suggest to you who may have had that question out there, uh, it would be the Russell 2000 that from a technical standpoint is the one that is giving you the best signal as we speak right now. On the Dow, the Dow is uh, trade the YM is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile that did form yesterday. It did confirm last night. And so why don't, you'll want to watch the 33788 area, but if price closes below that, the Dow has additional support, and that's between 33.254 and 33.551. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Currently, we got the Dow trading down 480, 435 points. The S&P off 65. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, sorry, multitasking, trying to get there. A couple questions that have come in, just trying to get those. Hey, let's uh, let's go back to the U.S. dollar index just for a moment out here, uh, because what I have up here are the uh, three of the uh, currency pairs that make up about 70-some-odd percent of the index. So here we can see the Great British Pound broke out of its uh, sideways consolidation, suggesting that it's going to complete its measure move and uh, and make a run higher. But right now it's pulling back, very likely pulling back to the oscillator and change line, the top of the consolidation, just simply to confirm it. Oftentimes, you break out of consolidation, price will come back and test it. Uh, and if it tests it and holds, that, that's, a very, that's a bullish message out here. So as the Great British Pound moves, continues to move lower, if it does continue to move lower, that's going to make the U.S. dollar index move higher. If you look at the euro, the euro ran into resistance right at its TD9 breakdown level. That was at the 1.218 area. Couldn't handle it. Now it's trading below that oscillator and change line. If it stays below that oscillator and change line, a further retracement could pull all the way back to its breakout level just to form up a new consolidation in about the 1.194 level. The Japanese, so if that continues to move lower, the U.S. dollar index will get stronger. If you take a look at the Japanese yen, that is now trading above a green oscillator and change line, which is at 109.13. That is signaling to you and I that it wants to move higher in 110.75. So when we take a look at the currency pairs, the underlying instruments that make up that U.S. dollar in, uh, index right now, all three of them are suggesting that the U.S. dollar index should move higher. So that's what's going on there. Let's go take a look at some requests out here. So let me shift screens here for a moment. This will take just a minute. I'm getting fairly decent at this, getting to the right screen. And go to the first question that came in. That first question is coming in from Jane, I believe. Uh, at least that's what the email says here. And uh, Jane writes in, uh, could you please look at Facebook? I'm short and wondering if you think it has bottom. So let's do this. Uh, give me a moment here to switch over to something else. Radio show charts. Where are those at? QR radio. There we go. Let me get Facebook going there. FB. And at the same time, I'm going to come over to our three panel chart. So the first thing we'll do, Jane, is take a look at Facebook and see where it's trading in relationship to its TAS market profiles and support. It's below the bottom of the daily. You can see the A to B equals CD down pattern. It's made the 1 to 1.272. Do you sell it? No, I don't think so, uh, because what you but what you're watching for is some type of bullish reversal candle. If you get that, that then sets up the Gartley buy pattern, and you would reverse positions out there. You would go from short to long. Daily time frame chart right now is not suggesting that you do that. On a weekly basis, price has gotten back to the center of its profile, or approximately. The low so far today has been 298.19. 297.17 is the center of the profile. What's the center of the profile? The center is where both buyers and sellers 
believe there's fair value for that time frame for that range. That range is 272.21 to 309.64. Facebook on a monthly basis is bullish from a profile standpoint because price remains above the top of its box. So how do we summarize these charts? What you're watching for is some type of bullish reversal candle to then exit that trade because of the A to B equals CD pattern. It would set up a buy the D point. Do we have that now? We do not. Let's go look at my white background charts. In this case here, um, let's look at the daily time frame again. Let's see where are we at in any kind of account. We're not in any kind of a TD9 bottom. Today's going to be bar number six. This would suggest that price could make its way towards 284.70. So as long as a bullish reversal candle does not form, that becomes your price target. And if it does, well, then you know uh, you've got it confirmed by the D point. Let's look at the short-term time frame charts. 15-minute, 15-minute chart, um, you know, it's... Uh, right now is suggesting that you want it this could bounce even further and that's as long as price remains above the level of 300.47 right now we're at 300.38 on the 30 minute time frame chart what do we have we've got a roads momentum indicator bottom bullish structured profile if price can take out that 300.78 area Price should make a run to 303.37. So the short-term time frame charts are saying there should be some type of counter trend rally. Do you exit the position? I, I don't think so at this stage here. It's just a counter trend rally. I'd like you to anticipate that. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And if it does happen, well, okay, you anticipated that, but you haven't gotten the signal in the daily time frame to jettison the position. 65-minute chart out here also trying to form a roads momentum bottom signal. Uh, the 130 minute chart, it's dealing with its breakout level of 300.46 and you're in bar number eight. So that has some potential bottoming signals out here and the 195 minute chart, no bottoming signal yet. And prices below two key breakout areas, that being 301.11 and 300.68. So still come to the same conclusion at this stage here wait for the daily confirmation because of that a to b equals cd down pattern uh jane but if you did take your profits here congrats on the uh, short trade and i would understand that based upon those short-term signals out there so i hope that helps you out thanks so much for spending the time to write in let's go to our next request out here this one coming in from who is this coming in from joe and Joe writes and he says, any thoughts about going long till rate? TLRY is the TLRY is the ticker symbol. Uh, we're gonna do the same setup here. Let me get this fired up on the white background charts, TLRY, and uh, let that go ahead and populate. We'll come over here to our back back black background charts. Take a look at this TAS market profiles. Um, is there any thoughts about going long? If you went long, I would understand it because price has made its way back to the bottom of its daily profile. Did that yesterday, tested and rejected it. That was at 1440. The volume that it was going against was the trading session from May 6th. There was 33 million shares and yesterday you did 28 million shares. So you were testing a prior swing point with lighter volume. So that would be reason number two. Reason number three is till Ray has made it back has made its way back to the bottom of its weekly profile, and that is priced at 1426 out there. So you have three reasons, or the charts are giving you signals of three reasons to consider taking a long position in Tilray. Let's go look at those daily time frame charts. As we look at the daily, or the other charts out here, as we take a look at the daily, it has the potential to form a TD9 count, but based upon where it's trading right now, um, they would be negated. So we can't use that as any kind of a signal or a pattern out here. Uh, you're going to have to rely upon the short-term time frame chart. So let's look at the 15-minute. What do I have? Not much. The 30-minute, not much. The 65-minute, not really much. Well, when I say not much, you got that spike lower yesterday that uh, then was rejected on this time frame. Again, not, not, not really great signal. So to make your decision out here, Joe, that decision is going to have to exclusively, exclusively be made. And it's, the, and it's, and it's in practice. Uh, it's, 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 it's fine. Based upon a swing point test on the daily, based upon its daily profile, as well as its weekly profile. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and have a, a great day. Terry is calling in. He is saying the Dow volume from early March onward seems high and asks your opinion. So is Terry on the phone? Do we have Terry? Do we yeah. have a caller on the line? We do. Perfect. Hey, hey Terry, Steve. thanks Thanks so much for calling. So uh, I'm sorry. So tell me what you're looking at so I can try well, to Well, I'm looking at the uh, – actually, I use Yahoo Finance, you know, some free charts, and um, go back on the Dow. And just since early March, and I don't know if it's a blip or whatever, but the daily volume is showing like over $350 million per day versus back in 
you know, anywhere prior to that, January uh, or September, October, whatever, is showing, you know, three to five million per day. So I don't know what the, whether it's aggregating something all of a sudden or something, or volumes as crazy as people are like fleeing the market at the top. I don't know. I would say, I would say that we're going to go to a hard break here, but what I would say is pull up your diamonds chart, DIA, and okay. see what the volume looks like there. But we'll, we'll, be, we'll be right back. I'll come back to you as soon as we're done from this break. Steve Rock right, with yeah. TFN. Uh, we'll be back with Terry in just a moment. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call. And you, too, can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with uh, Terry in Orlando. We're taking a look at the uh, Dow. Uh, specifically right now, I've got the Dow Diamonds chart up on my screen. And Terry was noticing some unusual volume activity on one of his uh, uh, data feeds out there. I think it was Yahoo Finance. And, and Terry, I find it when you get something like that, I find it uh, easier to to identify if there's if there's if it's real if there's a problem or not is just go look at the ETF out there. So I, I suggest that you did that during the break. Did you did that clear anything up for you? Or does yeah, it, still... it, 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 it did bring it more in line. Um, it's a little interesting because, you know, during the um, little reversals in 18 and then the big one in COVID, you had, you know, from probably an average of like a million, million to two million a day, you know, during 18, it kicked up to like four or five million a day during COVID, like 10 million a day. But, you know, volumes, even as we're going up on this last leg or whatever leg this is, 
volume sure. still seems to be increasing more than in those previous times prior to 2020. Um, so maybe a heads up of some sort, but it's not out of line like the you know the actual uh, Dow chart was showing. So it, it's more in line, but it's still higher volume over since the, the beginning of 2020 daily than it has been um, all through 18 and 19. So here's how so. here's how I would summarize what you what you've identified. And what you've identified, and this is really important. So, so I, 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 uh, uh, I award you for for doing that. It's looking at this chart right here. So maybe what you're picking up on is the mere fact that the global flow of capital is making its way onto the U.S. shores out here, and we know that by taking a look at the rate of change of all of these instruments, all of the major markets, and we can see that the Dow is the leader out there. And that bodes well longer term for the Dow when this correction is over. So what you identify, Terry, really does have some meaning. So thanks for doing that and bringing it to our attention. And uh, thanks for calling in. Folks, stay Appreciate tuned it. for you bet, you bet. So th stay tuned for two more great hours. David White's up next, the power trading hour after that. Tom O'Brien to bring us on home. I'll be back with you on Thursday, Thursday. Although I'm pretty thirsty on Wednesday. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Have a great day, folks.